Hey, this is Jay Freeborn, enrolled agent at WATax.com, Washington Tax Services, 31 years in business. Today's topic is IRS audits, live audits, and correspondence audits. So the big difference between a live audit and a correspondence audit is who is assigned to your case. A live audit is done by an individual that is assigned to your case, usually indicated by an area code on the letter that is local and you need to call this specific person and defend your tax return through a, what could be a lengthy audit. A correspondence audit is generated generally by a computer and it's indicated by a code in the upper right corner of your letter and it's usually the CP2000 code or the CP2501 code. And that correspondence is defended through fax or phone calls with this general audit line, which is a 1-800 number. So first, why do people get an IRS live audit? What constitutes a case in which the IRS is going to devote resources to auditing you? And I would say a big chunk is if you're self-employed and have a sole proprietorship reporting your income and your expenses on a Schedule C. That is a hugely common audit. And particularly a red flag is when somebody has a Schedule C and reports a loss that will bring you under the scrutiny of an IRS auditor pretty easily. That's the most common audit for live audits. So let's discuss the live audit process. We've broken it down into five steps. The first step is the introductory letter and a request for a meeting. When you get that letter, you, your accountant, or your attorney will want to respond, set a deadline for getting information to them, get a general sense of what their challenges are with your return. So that's part one. Part two is getting the information together. For some people that might require doing some extensive bookkeeping where there was no bookkeeping before, getting your receipts together, getting your bank statements together, getting as much defense and proof as you can to match the auditor's request. So that's part two. Part three is when you receive Form 4549, otherwise known as the 30-day letter, which gives you 30 more days to defend yourself in an audit. One thing that's helpful about this letter is it clearly spells out what the changes they're proposing so you can target your final push of information to meet those items. Once a 30-day letter is passed or they send you a revised 30-day letter after you've replied to it, then comes the final phase, which is part four, which is which they'll send you a notice of deficiency, also called the 90-day letter, of which for all intents and purposes, your audit is closed and they give you a one final opportunity to go to tax court uh, set in 90 days. You'll see the date on the notice of deficiency. Finally, part five is you can have an accountant or an enrolled agent who has passed the tax court exam defend your audit in tax court or somewhere between part three and four, you can actually appeal the audit with the in the audit division that's doing your case. Or finally, if you just decline to do a tax court case, you can do what is called an audit reconsideration, which is an alternative to tax court, maybe more cost effective, but it does take a year to 18 months to process where you truly dispute what your auditor concluded on your tax return, but you also have excellent evidence to rebut their claim. The same goes for tax court, except tax court is more expensive, but it is quicker than an audit reconsideration. That is the fifth and final phase of your audit. After those have all closed, you either aren't gonna owe anything or you may owe something and have to pay the liability and or negotiate a settlement or a livable agreement. So a couple tips uh, on doing a live audit that we as your representative have learned from doing this for decades. One is, if you are losing your audit, it is a good opportunity to ask for a penalty waiver. Um, I find that auditors are more uh, open to a penalty waiver than anybody in IRS collections who might get your case later. So you might want to make your penalty waiver request through the auditor who might be sympathetic to your case after having dealt with you for a couple months. Uh, furthermore, you know, ask for more time uh, with the auditor. 
Uh, they're you know humans just like you are, and they can accommodate more time to get information. Uh, finally, you know when you get that notice of deficiency, usually your audit is closed, and tax court's your only option. But if you get in touch with the auditor quickly after getting the notice of deficiency, they might give you a little more time before setting the tax court clock in stone. So there's some uh, flexibility on that. So as we said, IRS correspondence audits are generated generally from the IRS computers, which uh, see income that you didn't report on your return, income that is indicated on the forms 1099-R for 401k or IRA withdrawal, 1099-S for home sale or other property sale, or uh, 1099-Bs for stock sales that you didn't report. Uh, you're going to have to defend yourself in a CP2000, that's the code for it, or a CP2501 IRS letter by faxing correspondence to the IRS or calling them or having an accountant or attorney like us represent you. Uh, many of these audits can be won, uh, particularly when you sell your house, for example, through a 1099-S. Most of the uh, capital gains from uh, home sales are excluded from income if you've lived in the house for over two years. A quarter of a million if you're single, half a million in profits if you're uh, married filing joint. And uh, that's a pretty easy defense. Other things are a little trickier to defend, and in some cases you have multiple items that are missing from your tax return. But essentially, correspondence audits are defended by sending a fax to the IRS or by calling them. But usually you will have to fax or mail a presentation disputing what they claim uh, to be mistaken on your return. So your chances of getting audited are probably less than two or three percent, but you might get audited. And if you do, you're going to need to consider hiring a professional like Washington Tax or WATax.com or representing yourself. Uh, with a $3 trillion deficit last year, uh, chances are that you'll be seeing more audits in the future. And if you do get audited, uh, and you want an expert opinion, we suggest that you email us through the contact us page at watax.com or call 1-888-282-4697 during normal business hours to talk to an expert.